So today's video is going to be on, are you guys seeing the news? Anybody out there really paying attention to what's going on with all these food banks that are running out of food? And the long, long lines of people in desperation that are reaching out and trying just to get a few boxes of food for them and their families. Ask yourself, what is going on in this country? What is really taking place and really changing? What is the real normal going to be? Where are we heading in this journey of life that we're living in right now? Why were so many people caught off guard? Why didn't people be prepared? Why didn't they have a backup plan? in place for them and their families. The question is, why? The answer is, how? And we're gonna be covering that today on this video. So stay tuned. With everything that's been going on in this country since Charlie Victor 19 rolled into town has changed exactly how everybody thinks, how everybody shops, what people are doing. I believe that there is more preppers out there now than in, there ever has been in history. Maybe if you look back in time in history, maybe the Cold War Maybe there was more preppers and stuff then, but that was probably more of your homegrown canned vegetables and meats and stuff like that that was pressure canned years ago during the Cold War. We live in a different time now with Charlie Victor 19 and what it has done to our society and what it is doing to mankind in a whole throughout the world. Having some few basic stockpile of basic items can be the difference between having something to eat and starving to death, putting food on the table for your family, or listening to your kids say they're hungry, which is every parent's nightmare. In the times we live in, having basic necessities for an emergency situation or a pandemic is one way that you can secure your future and your family's future. We have all done several videos. There's a lot of channels out there and I've done videos on how to make sure that you can secure your future for your family by slowly stocking up and having basic necessities for you and your family on hand, just on the chance that something does happen. You lose your job, something happens with one of your family members, with Charlie Victor 19, there's so many people that have passed away. I can only imagine the love that you have lost in your life and how, if they were the breadwinner, how that has impacted your family. Not everybody has insurance. Not everybody has a backup plan. Not everybody has money saved in the bank or even a small two week supply of emergency food. Just having a small emergency supply of at least two weeks to get you started will help ensure that if something does happen to a family member, to the breadwinner of the family, that your family will have a little bit of a backup plan until maybe they can get on their feet or figure out how they're going to supply what the family needs as far as food or any other type of supplies. This would take the burden off a lot of people and it will give you a better night's sleep in the long run. 
having a clear mind, knowing that you do have a backup plan. So much more that goes into planning for an emergency situation than just basic food. You have to make sure that you have all types of different products that you use on a daily basis and make sure that you have enough to last you for those couple of weeks. So if you can only afford to try to get started and build up to a two week plan, that would be very beneficial to you and your family. And then you can take and increase that plan slowly over time to where you can build it up to last even longer. Three weeks, four weeks, take baby steps. It doesn't have to all be done in one week. Most people just don't have that kind of money. Most people are barely getting by. Most people are sitting in those long lines that we see on the TV. I want you to watch a quick video from Shepard Smith and see what you guys think. San Antonio Food Bank in Texas is one of those groups. Take a look at the lines there last week. I mean, let this sink in. The food bank serves eight semi-truck loads of food to people in need every day. They say the numbers are so high, they have to ration food. Eric Cooper's with us now. He's the CEO of the San Antonio Food Bank. Eric, thank you so much for being here and for everything you do. You know, in America, the richest country in all the world, we have incredible hunger. I, what? How, how is this possible? Well, Shepard, I tell you, today we had a distribution that fed 2,000, and we have these distributions all the time. And a woman in the line said, Eric, I juggled kids in my job. Now I have no job, no income, no savings, no food. For Feeding America Food Bank in the country, all of us are seeing this unprecedented demand. And we're just working as hard as we can to balance the private donations we get with the public assistance to try to make sure people are there. I'm sorry. Though. No, please go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I just, COVID-19 has taken so much, right? People's jobs, they've taken their loved ones. and You, you know, Eric, I, we watch as schools close, and I've, a lot of us have been wondering, those school meals are essential for so many kids, and I wonder if they're still getting the meals they need. Well, for so many of those schools, they, they were able to nourish kids because they could convene them in school. Now, with distant learning, kids online, they're missing those meals. The child would miss 10 meals in a week. And if a mom has two or three kids in school, she's now feeling the impact of the cost of that food at home. And without employment, yeah. kids are going hungry. And we're hearing from schools that kids are struggling with their education because they don't have access to good nutrition. It's just incredible. I know here in New York City, at least, the public schools provide the meals if you can come get them and, and that sort of thing. And I'm sure a lot of cities do that, but certainly not everywhere. And, and I wonder, I know you interact with a lot of people at the food bank. Are you seeing different faces, different groups of people now during the pandemic? Well, pre-pandemic, we fed about 60,000 people a week. And now we're seeing about 120,000 people a week. And most of those are new to the food banks. Uh, they've never had to ask for help before. Um, I, you know, I think of a, a couple that I met at our distribution, an elderly couple that as they were driving through to pick up their groceries, um, the wife rolled down her window just to say thank you. And as I started to talk with them, you know, I said, well, what, what do you want people to know uh, about what's going on in your family? and 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 this hardship and you know the the gentleman just bowed his head and um it started to get emotional he was wearing a mask and he just said it's hard it's hard mm -hmm. um it's so hard and i think for these families that are just trying to meet the basic need of food uh it's it's humbling Ugh. more needs to be done and, and, you know, and to that end, I know a lot of people... As you just saw in that video, 
eight truckloads of food a day and they have to ration what they're passing out to all those people waiting in all those long lines in Texas. And that's just one state. This is happening in every state throughout the United States of America. This is the new normal we're living in right now. As the guy said at the very end of that video, when he asked the man in the car, you know, what does anybody want to know about his story? And as he said, it's very hard, very hard. It must be very difficult for people that weren't prepared. That was caught with their pants down. That didn't think that something like this could happen in this country that we live in. When all reality, this can happen anywhere. And we're living proof of it. A lot of us live it every day. So in closing, make sure that you're doing your preppy. Make sure you're trying to get that two-week supply. Aim for a small goal. Just a small goal, people. Hit that two-week supply and then slowly work on increasing that plan to try and make sure that you can secure you and your family's future. In all reality, you may have to help out close family members if they're not able to prep or maybe they didn't believe that this could actually happen. A lot of people have that mindset. And when push comes to shove, we all know that the true inner spirit of yourself, you will not be able to let one of your own family members, even if they don't live in your house, go hungry. It's just not feasible. It's not something that's human. And more likely, it's not something you were taught. Think about that, folks. Well, this is Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And I really hope everybody took something out of this video. And I hope you get something that is beneficial and lights a fire underneath your rear end and gets you to think and get you to strive for that two-week emergency supply. Once again, I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners, and until next time, y'all keep prepping, y'all stay safe, and if you have a little extra, especially at this time of year, maybe donate a little bit to the food bank. A couple of bags, Probably wouldn't even hurt him, especially to all you preppers that have been prepping for quite a long time. You help out a family American. You never know, someday you might be in that line. Till next time, I'll catch you all on the flip side.